Hey everybody, what is going on? Hexlex here. It's Monday, which means it is time once again for one of our viewer specials. Uh, for those who are new to the channel or have never seen one of these videos in particular before, uh, the viewer special is the weekly video series in which we look at duels from you all, uh, the viewers, as opposed to seeing me play all the time. Uh, it's just a really good chance to uh, celebrate the community that we have, um, especially in the Discord server there, and also just get a chance to see, again, in, in terms of like celebrating the community, uh, see what cool decks and games uh, you all be getting up to. And in line with celebrating the community, we are, as always, ever going to start with announcing our winner for this week's Plex Leaderboard Challenge, uh, which is going to be Ormus, who goes by Jordan on the Discord server, uh, with a win rate of 68.3%. Wow, that's pretty, pretty good. So uh, if you're wondering what that's all about, uh, we have a ongoing contest in the discord server as well uh so if you're interested in that contest or if you want to submit a duel for the viewer special either way definitely check out the invite link to uh, our discord server the hex Lex plex in the description below um but yeah for the plex leaderboard challenge all you need to do is have untapped downloaded uh just play your ranked games as you would normally uh, untapped will automatically keep track of your win rate uh, and then whoever has the highest win rate of people who've submitted their profiles to the appropriate channel uh, will then receive prizing. We give out prizes every single week. So um, again, more info for that is going to be in the Discord server. And if you're interested in downloading the Untapped Companion, uh, you can do so with my affiliate link below. It's free. Like I said, it'll keep track of your games and your win rate, among a, a myriad of other features. Um, and on top of that, it does definitely support the channel to download that as well. So thank you very much to everyone who has and everyone who will um but yeah so as i mentioned before uh the main bulk of this video is going to be watching duels from you all the viewers and again we have a channel for the submissions there it's called viewer special submissions uh in the discord there so the main bit of information you're going to want to leave is your nine digit player code uh, that way I can view your profile and see your publicly saved replays. If your replays are not publicly saved, I will not be able to view them. So please make sure that they are. Um, if you have more than one duel that you want to submit, uh, that's totally fine. You can definitely do separate submissions for separate games. Uh, I would just ask that you don't submit the same game like over and over again, like spam it, right? Um, uh, it also helps too if you want to leave like um, some information about the duel. Like if you have more than one saved, definitely leave either your opponent's name and or the date and time, so that way I know specifically what game you want me to watch. Um, but also if you want to leave a little blurb like I played this deck versus this deck, um, or talk a little bit about the duel, that definitely is very helpful as well. Um, we only get to feature a few duels per week, so if yours doesn't get featured, um, you know, there's always the next week. Like I said, we do this every single Monday. Uh, and on top of that, I do watch pretty much every submission that comes through, um, just about every single one. So, um, yeah, I mean, if nothing else, know that I did very, very, very likely watch your game, uh, even if it did not get featured. But again, there's always the next week there as well. Um, and the week after that, and the week after that, and after that. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, without further ado, let's take a look at some duels from you all now. Okay, our first game comes to us from Runther, who goes by Ethan over on the Discord server. So, let's see, we have a game here, I believe it should be this one. We're going to be seeing us play against Vanquish Soul with a... Oh, let me open Untapped here so we can uh, whoops, see the deck list there. Uh, we're going to be using Red Resonator with Punk against... Um, Whatever deck I just said. <laughs> Big Rishul, that one. So. All right, let's take a look and see what we got here. So it looks like we... Oh, we're rocking the Earthbound package, too. Hell yeah. Uh, love a good punk pile, especially one that rocks a lot of my favorite cards like Rev and Assault Synchron. So, and the Bestials, too. Was very, very eager to see this deck played out. Um, yeah, let's take a look here. We're going to lead with the Ogre Dance, uh, but the opponent has a D Shifter for us. It's going to be pretty nasty, uh, as, you know, a lot of the strategies that our deck is made up of are definitely very Graveyard Reliant. So, we do get the Zayamine, though. Uh, we're going to Normal Summon Zayamine and pay 600 to grab our Foxy Tune. Foxy Tune can still be used to summon itself here, uh, even if it can't use the effect to summon out something. Uh, we're going to Normal Summon that alongside Imperm and then pass over to our opponent, who's going to lead with raisin we are definitely gonna want to imperm the raisin that way they can't get the search off but oh yeah i was gonna say they're probably gonna be able to just bounce the raisin back anyway and they do end up indeed having the heavy borger in the hand here so imperm kind of fizzles uh they get to search their royal wow Zhao Wang. oh and they have stake your soul too wow this hand is stacked fairly stacked uh yeah, they get to summon out a Zhao Wang from deck in addition to the one they just added from hand 
Uh, they're going to reveal Xiao Long and Raisin from hand. So there are two unknown cards that we don't know in their hand. That is one consolation, I guess, of playing against Vanquish Souls that you do at the very least generally know what's going on in their hand, but <laughs> a lot of the time it tends not to really be that helpful um, if you can't stop what they're doing, so. Alright, moving to battle. They're going to Borger over the Foxy Tune. It's a lot of damage, but it's not lethal. Leaves us at 2400. They're going to set one, bounce back to Zhao Wang, and pass. Okay, so let me think about this for a second. They have five cards in hand. We know. Mad Love, Raisin, Zhao Long, and I think there's still two unknowns? I believe there's still only two unknown cards. Well, there would be three, right? Where did the extra card come from? Oh, the draw from Borger. Got it. Okay. Yep, that makes sense. Alright, no longer under Shifter here. We're going to lead by normal summoning the Soul Resonator to add Bone Archfiend. We also have the Earthbound Prisoner Stone Sweeper to add the Vision Resonator now. We even have an e in hand, so we're looking pretty solid here as far as, like, the ability to combo off, it's just really going to depend on if the opponent ends up having any hand traps, or if that back row ends up being something kind of nasty like a Dust Devil or Snow Devil, right? So, okay, we get to add the Crimson Gaia. Zhao Wang effect is going to activate. We're going to draw a Mockbird here. Ooh, that's interesting. So we don't need any more searches to do the rest of our plays here. Or at the very least, we'll have enough plays without having to do searches. I was going to say, because we just added that Crimson Gaia, but it looks like we're not going to really need it here. Okay, here is the Scarred Dragon Archfiend. Activating Crimson Gaia. Oh, we can add from Grave to hand. That's right. I forgot. You don't now always have to add from deck. It's Grave as well. So we can still use the Crimson Gaia. The draw makes a lot more sense now. Cool. We get to make this shield Dispater. Scar Red is going to try to bring out Red Dragon Archfiend, but Call by the Grave will put a stop to that. I still think we're in a pretty good spot here, all things considered. It's too bad we had to draw because now we can't eat Telly for, like, Zay, I mean, and then go do punk stuff. We do get to bring back that Scarred uh, Dragon Archfiend, thanks to the Bestial Dispater effect, battling it over their two attack mode monsters. Looking pretty good here. Okay, passing back over to our opponent. We have a monster effect negate this time, and really last turn, like, they hit us for a lot of damage, but they didn't do too, too much that was, like, super threatening. Okay, so they have a Cashier or Rise Heart. That's interesting. That's a new card. So now we know they have Riceheart, Madlove, Raisin, and another Shaolong, right? So it's still two unknown cards here, as Call by the set would end up being one of the unknown cards we didn't know earlier. Okay, Pross, but there's another unknown card out. So now there's only one unknown card, I believe. Alright, Madlove, Unicorn, Ratesoth, Theosis, Caesar, Duster. They'll probably grab Caesar here, right? Yeah, makes sense. Alright, Caesar, Riceheart, Raisin, Madlove, Shaolong, unknown. And Borger now. I mean, this is... Uh, what I'm doing out loud is, like, what I do every time I play against Vanquish Soul. Well, I mean, I usually have a little notebook that I write down what's in their hand. I just kind of cross it off as I go, but... Okay, so we're revealing... Oh, the fire in the dark, right? I thought I thought they were revealing for Rock's effects for a second. I was like, wait, what? Um, okay. Yeah, we get to use our Soul Resonator to stop the destruction effect of Raisin, which is pretty cool. Yeah, I wonder how they're gonna... Like, I guess they do have Valius. But even if they bounce to summon Valius... Oh, but they can summon Zhao Long here, too. Yeah, now they can... Okay, that makes a lot more sense. Now they can summon the Valius. And I guess they're probably gonna pop a card here? Yeah, there's no way you wouldn't. Pantera, I think that's their last card. I think we know all their cards now. Raisin Borger, Pantera, Rise Heart. I think Mad Love is still in there. And the other Zhao Long, is that still in there? I'm trying to remember, actually. No, it's not. Okay, I don't know what the last card is anymore. <laughs> I was writing it down so I didn't keep track there. But I, it's like I was saying at the beginning of, of our opponent's last turn there. It's like, you know, we have... Like, our board state might not look super impressive, but they didn't really do that much on their last turn. And between Dispater and Scar Red, we definitely have more threatening bodies than we had on the turn before. So now we're not under Joel or Shifter. We're just going to fire off this E-Telly. Ah, here he is. Da peep! That peep sweep, it's coming! <laughs> I gotta use the scar red effect here. Uh, opponent is going to inflict 1500. They really just want to take more damage from that peep, don't they? <laughs> I know it's pep, but ever since, uh, who was that? I think Maple. Ever since I heard Maple call it peep, it's like, I can't, I can't not now. Okay, Zhao Wang F summoned itself. Crimson Gaia F to add back our Vision Resonator. We could summon that. Or we could summon this Jewel Swarm, too. 
Rock is going to add back Valius. Okay. Sinking for eight. We can Drew Storm F to send something. Ooh, he's all Synchro Stardust. Okay. Sending the Rock. Makes sense. Although, really, wouldn't we, wouldn't we be able to crash into the Borger? Oh, we're just going for it. Okay. So we're using the Excel Stardust effect. Xiaolong is activating here, but like this is totally fine because it can't affect Pep. Yeah, or Peep. <laughs> so that's yeah, gonna have to turn the Red Dragon into defense mode here. We're gonna making the Stardust, and this is gonna be like Baron de Fleur. Do we play Baron? Oh, we don't. Wow. It's gonna be Sheng Yang, Sword Soul Supreme Sovereign Sheng Yang. Okay, here comes the Valius returning the. Okay, I was waiting for this to happen. It's like where is the stupid Valius already? They destroyed one of their cards in the field. Oh, oh no. I think they might have sealed their own fate here if they target the Sheng Ying. Or if they end up trying to destroy the Sheng Ying. If they do that, then they'll, they'll have actually lost here. Okay, no, they did the Red Dragon. Oh, but we banish anyway because of the Soul Resonator. That's right. Oh, yeah, so we just win here. <laughs> we even get to bring back the Scar. Oh, we wouldn't want anyway if we get to bring back Scar Red, right? Because we could have battled with something over Sheng Ying. Then brought back Scar Red, battled over the other thing with that, and then swung in with Peep. So it didn't even really matter. Okay, that makes sense. Wow, that was that was really, really good first game to watch. I I also definitely respect cooking cooking up your own like red resin air pile here with the punk stuff. It, it seems like it's a very, very good combination. And uh yeah, definitely can't wait to see um what else we have in store here. Um yeah, thank you very, very much, Runther. Let's take a look at the next duel here. Okay, our next opponent is... Opponent, sorry. <laughs> our next uh, viewer, rather, is going to be Laceleaf. Uh, Laceleaf comes to us with a Snake Eye Pearly deck uh, that is going up against... I think it's just regular Snake Eye, right? Yep. Now, I've heard of people using Snake Eye with Pearly, but I haven't actually seen... I don't think I've played with or against. Well, I know I haven't played with. I don't think I've even played against this variant either. So I definitely wanted to see it uh, in action here for myself. Plus, kind of like the last duel where, um, you know, Runther cooked up red plus punk. Definitely love to see people slapping together two archetypes. Love pile decks. Uh, looks like opponent is going to lead with Diabel. Would they pitch for it? It was, uh, the, was it? The usage rate is in the way. It was another Diabel. Okay. Or no, it was uh, another Originals. Let me see that again. Or no, their graveyard. I want to see their graveyard. Oh my goodness, replay. Let me let me look at this, please. There we go. Okay, it was another original sin. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like there's just so many like UI things, but uh, anyway. So they're gonna go for the Snake Eye Ash. Okay. And the Poplar. This is definitely if they're gonna combo off like on turn one, this is definitely the ideal way for us for them to do it because like. Well, also, they, they lost a card because they Astra Maxi, but, like, they're only going to have two other cards in addition to the rest of their board here, so... And we have both Sink Eye and Pearly action going on in our hand. So this is one of those cases where, like, you know, I think a lot of people would, like, snap concede. And, and in fact, I see this on, on just online in various, like, comments or, or messages and stuff. People saying, like, yeah, if my opponent's on Sink Eye and they play through my hand trap, I usually just snap concede. And it's like, well, okay, I mean... If, if you're just trying to save time, I mean, that is valid. We only have so much time to play Yu-Gi-Oh! in a day. So if you're more interested in, like, getting more time to play games as opposed to, like, ranking up, that's totally valid. Um, but if your goal is to, like, get better at Yu-Gi-Oh!, then you should not ever be, like, snap conceding in situations like that. I've never, ever. It's just wild to me. It's wild to me that, like, there are people who will complain that the game is, like, so hard and they can't, like, rank up. And then we'll also say, like... Yeah, what I said of like, yeah, if I don't open any hand traps going second, I just always just instantly concede. And it's like, well, that would probably have something to do with why you're not wrecking up, honestly. But um, anyway. Ah, yeah, the 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 bon Well, you know what? Okay, that bonfire for the Snake Eye Ash makes a lot of sense because you know, obviously, you would want to do it in case you top deck another bonfire. But it does also tell us that like, the other card in hand is the only one that could be a hand trap, and it probably isn't. Well, I mean, I, I, I should say it could be. Um, but it's definitely not going to be like Imperm or Call by or Cross Out or anything like that, because they would have set that. So it's going to be like Maxi or Ash Blossom or Valor or Nib if it is a threat at all. So uh, we're already looking pretty good here as far as like not really having to play under too much surprise stuff as far as like uh, hand traps go, right? So, I mean, again, there is one unknown card, but it's 
when there's only one unknown card, it becomes that much less likely to be any one specific hand trap, if that makes any sense, so. Ooh, you have a Royal Diabelle, hell yeah. One set unfortunately was not a good draw at all, but uh, yeah, it is what it is. Uh, opponent's going to IP in response to the My Friend. That's interesting. Is this going to make an Apo here? It looks like they are just making an Appalooza here. I don't think this is a good time to make Appalooza. I understand why our opponent did it, but uh, if you do it this way, you also just walk right into Triple Tactics talent, so it's like, I don't know. Um, that's why it's really important to, like, truly evaluate <laughs> revealing the Snake Eye cards alongside the My Friend is really funny. Although, to be fair, we have already shown them wanted, so they, they probably already figured out we're on a, a Snake Eye package, but... We're popping our Pearly, that's so fine. Yeah, I don't know, I, it's, uh, as I was about to say earlier, I, I think this is why it's, like, so important to be mindful about the timing of your disruptions. I, I mean, I've said this so many times on the channel, but like, people will act like, oh, you put up the Snake Eye board, you automatically win. You put up the turn one board for Math Mech, you already win. You put up, the, you, know what, you know what I mean? If you, you put up a turn one board with a bunch of interaction and or negates, and then you've already won the duel by that point. But, you still gotta play that disruption, and you still gotta play it well. That's a skill that Yu-Gi-Oh players just don't value at all. It's wild to me. Like, they act like you auto-win just because you went, like, again, it's like I was saying before, you know, with people, like, snap conceding when, uh, their stuff, or their opponent goes off uninterrupted, or they don't open hand traps, it's like, you know, people act like the turn one inboard is the be-all, end-all, and of course, whoever sets up the turn one inboard is more likely to win, I'm not arguing against that, but, um, yeah, to act like the opponent automatically wins because it went off uninterrupted when you have a lot of gas in hand is, like, so... It's so disingenuous. It's so like you know, it's like just try, <laughs> you just try to play through it. Can you can you try for like even two seconds? But anyway, um, so we did manage to make the Zeus there, um, and then now we are board wiping to avoid. Well, I mean, we still have our Zeus placed in the spell trap zone, but they get to proc their Flamberge. We get to proc our Diabell as well as the uh, Poplar as well. Oh, and we can proc the Diabell because of the spell trap zone. Zeus there. Ash on the Wanted was... Is it kind of interesting? I don't think it's bad. I'm trying to think. Because we know they have a Snake Eye Ash in hand. But if they wanted for Diabelle, it's not like Ash against the second effect of Snake Eye Ash is going to win us the duel anyway. Hmm. Yeah, no, I, I think that was fine. It's like... It's always weird when you have something like Ash Blossom, but you're in a situation where you know your opponent's going to have plays anyway. But I think in this case, because they still have access to Snake Eye Ash, we're keeping them off of access to Diabelle. Which makes sense, I think. Alright, so they're bringing back the Promethean Princess. Original Sin F. To add... Are they adding another Snake Eye Ash? Have they already Normal Summoned? Did I miss them Normal? No, they haven't. Okay, I was going to say. It's just, that's like their second Sick Eye Ash in hand. Oh, I guess they just wanted the draw off the... That makes sense. They just wanted the draw off wanted. Okay, so we got another Flamberge here. They're making Hita. Okay. Placing their Ambla Whale. Now, it's funny, because I think... I think we... I think Lee Sleeve did mention that... The opponent missed lethal here. They did miss lethal. Look at that, because this is a 4300 access code, not 53. Do they not have a leak 3 to go into? Um, this is why you should always play Selene and or Nightmare Unicorn to make your 5300 access. Although that wouldn't have been lethal anyway, because we would have been at um, 200 life points still. I mean, I'm sure they could have found lethal another way. Like, that was interesting. Well, if they played Selene, hang on, because they have Diabelle in their yard, right? Yeah, yeah, they totally do. They've used it before. Yeah, if they played Selene, they would have totally had lethal here. I think they needed to be playing Selene, but they could have also set this up in a different way. Yeah, again, Lacey mentioned our opponent missing lethal, and I think they did if they were on certain cards. But maybe they weren't, which is why they didn't go for lethal. Who knows? Um, anyway, they get to bring back their Amblo Whale, which is whatever, it's fine. Who cares about Amblo Whale? Um, 
Again, just, I, I've noticed our opponent is just pulling the trigger on this princess. Uh, I think it definitely pays to be a little more patient with this card for sure. Especially if like, especially if you know it's not a straight up mirror and they're on like a variant. I don't know. Okay, so Oak and Ash are triggering. Um, but there's really not too much to fear besides that one face down card. Like our opponent's board is big, but it doesn't really have like any interaction on it. Like at all, actually, has zero interaction on it. My friend for Happy Happy Delicious, we find the Delicious. We're gonna use the original sin to send the Happy for a Snake Eye Ash from deck. Snake Eye Ash F is activating to add the Poplar. Uh, we're gonna use the Poplar effect now, of course, to summon itself. Poplar F will then end up adding the Divine Temple. This is why Snake Eye is so splashable. Um, by the way, it's it's really interesting because. Snake Eye does not always need its normal summon. In fact, with Diabelle and Original Sin, uh, you can pretty easily get away with doing Snake Eye plays without using your normal summon. Hurley, also a deck that doesn't really need its normal summon a lot of the time. Like, um, like in both decks' cases, like, yeah, if you open Pearly or Snake Eye Ash, you'll just start by normal summoning it. But you have other ways, like a lot of other ways, to turbo those cards out of your deck as well. Um, it's, 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 again, it's why Snake Eye is so splashable as a deck um because of like how consistent it is how few cards you need to commit to make a line for snake eye and again the fact that it doesn't even always use up um resources like a normal summon there so okay i probably plump I'm gonna take our opponents promethean princess and now we get to overlay into okay we are going into the noir yep that makes sense and we're going to eat their access code, too. It's <laughs> good. Putting back their Amble Whale. Putting back their Snake Eye Ash. Oh, we're just going to put back all their stuff here, aren't we? Yep. Okay, now we're leaking IP and Noir into our Promethean Princess. Princess F to bring back the... Oh, are we going to do... Wait, do we play Zealantis? Yeah, let me see the list here. No, we're just going to Battle Phase, I see. Yeah, I was going to say, I'd be really surprised if we had room for Zealantis. But, oh, no, we didn't even need it here. That's right, because our opponent wasn't even at uh, 8k, I don't think. Wait, 27 through... Oh, we had the temple up. Yeah, so that's definitely more than 8k right there. What am I saying? Math math is hard and difficult. But, yeah, thank you very much, Lacey, for uh, sharing that game. Yeah, no, it's, it's cool. It's really cool to see... Um, I think it's cool to see, anyway, two archetypes mixed together. I really like pile decks, and... Um, a lot of the time, I really like to see how a pile deck plays out in practice uh, to get a good sense of like, oh yeah, this is why these work together. And I think this was a great, this duel was a fantastic showing of why Pearly and Snake Eye work together. Beyond just being like level one, like people might be like, oh, Pearly is level one and Snake Eye Ash is level one. That makes sense. But it's like, that doesn't really have anything to do with it, in my opinion. Um, I mean, it can sometimes, but I think it mostly, again, comes down to the fact that uh, they don't really... Uh, mess each other up with like locks or anything or even taking a normal summon a lot of the time so uh we do have one more game to watch let's see that one okay our last game is going to come to us from abe mania abe has a game that's actually from a challenger cup which is pretty cool we're gonna take a look at that here uh abe is going to be playing unchained against uh, uh, snake eye cool. let's check this out it's like a pretty Solid unchained list we've got going on here. Oh yeah, didn't Abe? I think you were the one who pulled like a bunch of unchained royals, right? If I recall correctly. So uh, because this is from a tournament, it was in a dual room, which means we get to see our opponent's opening hand here. Wow, our opponent's hand is like a textbook Snake Eye opening hand here, right? They have the Ash. Uh, they have multiple ways to disrupt. Going second, they have the Cross Out. They did also open a Flamberge, which is of course pretty good for us because uh, the Sectify doesn't want to open this card, but. Um, opening Flamberge is not really that big of a deal at all when the rest of the hand is looking this good. So we're going to leave with the Abomination's Prison. But it's going to immediately Ash Blossom it, which is actually pretty good for us um, in the long run. Because this is definitely not the right choke point to Ash Blossom uh, Unchained, in my opinion. I don't even think... I see a lot of people using Valor and Imperm on the tour guide. I don't even think that's right a lot of the time because it could very easily have Sharvara in hand. I think Yama. Yeah, exactly. I think Yama is the best uh, disruption point against Unchained. And indeed, looks like they are going to end up using the Imperm against the Yama here. 
I can tell you this much for sure. Like, definitely don't... Oh, we're not even on... I really like that you're not on the DDD stuff, because I think I'm about to take that out of my Unchained deck. I was about to say, don't ever Ash Blossom uh, the DDD Contract Continuous Spell. Um, like, don't ever do that. <laughs> because that's, like, um, the biggest uh, uh, bait from Unchained, I think, as far as, like, uh, fading out disruption and stuff. So... Uh, they do have the cross up for Ash Blossom, which is going to be pretty brutal here, but, um, ah, it's not brutal. It just means they get to do their plays. Which, again, I think a lot of people would like. I mean, obviously, this is a tournament, so of course we're not going to concede that easily, but there are a lot of people who would just, like, if they were on ladder, just concede there. Um, which, again, if your main goal is to just play as many games as you can you know, quickly and you're not interested in breaking up, just playing Yu Gi Oh! It's totally valid. 100% understand that. But, as again, as mentioned, if your goal is to improve at Yu-Gi-Oh! and reach higher ranks, then um, you definitely do yourself no no good by conceding so early. So, okay, they're bringing back Oak and Ash for the Poplar. Yep. Uh, we do still have the, uh, what's it called? The Trap Guard here. The Abominable Chamber. Yep. That can summon. So, they're going for the Nightmare Unicorn on our back row. Oh, but now they can't... Oh, now they can. They can go for access code. Oh, but we have, um... Don't we have something? Wait, they didn't make access code? Huh? Huh? I mean, yeah, we would have had the Abominable Unchained Soul anyway. I'm baffled they didn't make the access code, though. That's wild. Especially because they would have been able to do this anyway. Like, Flamberge for IP. Also, that's a really, really good top deck there in the form of Tour Guide. The opponent is shotgunning the you know, IP. Oh, because we threatened to move to battle phase. I was going to say, that confused me for a second, because I was like, wait a second, how do they get priority? Because usually turn player has priority. But I see what happened here, I think, is that we we went straight, we, we tried to go straight into battle phase. It's like our first action in the main phase. Then the opponent uh, used the IP Mascarena as a quick effect, and then now we're going to continue our main phase. That makes sense. Either we're going back Oak and Poplar. Poplar's going to add Subversion. And yep, continuing our main phase. We get to normal summon Tour Guide for the Rhino Warrior. Um, they do still have the... What's it called? The Princess, right? Wait, where's Promethean Princess? Did you banish? Did they not make it? They not set it up? Huh? Okay. Oh, because they were going for an OTK line, but then didn't commit. That's right. I was going to say. Okay, so... Yeah, I was gonna say, oh, we have to play through Promethean Princess here, but now we're, we're good, actually. We don't have to do any of that. Our opponent has no... Okay, they do have the Underworld Goddess effect. Uh, to stop something from coming out of the graveyard. But other than that, now they have no disruption left at all. Okay, so we're making the Unchained Soul of Anguish. Anguish F, we're gonna link off with our opponent's Underworld Goddess, because that effect does target... Now I can make a bomb. Move to a battle. A bomb is gonna battle over the oak, and I believe that lets it destroy a card. We could pop the. We're popping the ash here. Oh yeah. We, oh, but then we get to trigger the. Ah, uh, uh, I was gonna say, why don't we pop the field spell? But this makes sense now because now we get to trigger our effects. We get to trigger both Yama and our Ruha. Bringing back Sarama and then popping it, and then our Ruha gets to summon out the blue Dalgi Shyama. Oh, we get Sharvara too. Oh, and then now we can make our DDD. Yep. Wave Hiking Caesar. And now we'll destroy the temple. <laughs> Good stuff. They do still have the subversion in play, or in hand rather, but. Yeah, it doesn't seem like they're going to be able to do too much beyond that. Oh, do they have original sin in the yard? They don't. Wow, that's really good for us. Oh, and they did it on the A-bomb? I think that's a misplay. I think they definitely should have pushed back our high Caesar. Oh, I don't even get A-bomb's prison. That's so good. Oh, yeah, now we can summon Rakia. Rakia can pop our Spell Trap Zone A-bomb. That brings back our Prox, our Yama. Uh, to bring back the sh 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 Shirama? Is that what this one's called? Yeah, and then they're just going to concede. Woo! Good stuff. Congrats on that win, Abe. That was a very, very good one. Um... Yeah, thanks for submitting that. I would love to see more Challenger Cup games if anyone else out there is playing in them. I think uh, I think tournament duels are really fun to watch uh, in particular because, again, people don't concede early or anything like that. So, 
Um, yeah, very well played. Uh, thank you very much for submitting, as well as everyone else who um, who uh, submitted for the viewer special. Thank you all so very much. We could not do this video series without you all. So again, thank you. Uh, let's move now to our outro. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching all the way to the end of the video, that means a lot to me. Uh, it's also a great way to support the channel, so thank you very much for it in that way as well. Uh, if you're interested in supporting the channel in other ways, uh, like the very special patrons that I am thanking here, uh, you can do so by checking out some of the links in the description, one of those goes to the Patreon, uh, where you can join these fine folk and support the channel that way. I do post daily content over on Patreon, so uh, you do get something for support there and if you're interested I also have a coaching tier option uh, as well details again will be on patreon in the link below uh, also in the description linked below is my twitch page where I stream uh, a few times a week you can go ahead and check that out follow or subscribe over there uh, if you ever want to catch me live uh, you'll also find my second YouTube channel if you feel like subscribing over there to watch some of the twitch vods as well as some additional uh, non yu gi -Oh related content that I make over there. Uh, again, any of those links you want to check out is all a great way uh, of supporting. But again, even if you don't do that, just watching was also a fantastic way to support. And once again, I have to thank you so very much. But uh, in any case, this is Hexlex. I'm going to be signing out and I'm hoping you have a fantastic day.